Electricity is a very valuable component, whether it be for workplaces, factories, or even just a home. But when there are malfunctions, it can be a bit costly to call an electrician, but can also be a bit confusing to fix yourself. So in today's video, we're going to discuss electrician hacks for everyday people. In most cases, when there's a broken outlet, there's an easier solution than you may think. Here are some hacks that you can try before calling an electrician to fix an outlet. First, you should always make sure that the appliances are plugged in. While it may seem surprising, one of the most common issues is that the appliance somehow came unplugged, which is why it's so important to check as it's an easy fix. Another solution is to check the breaker box, the reason being that an overloaded outlet may have tripped the breaker. All you have to do is try to reset any tripped breakers, but if that doesn't work, you may also need to try to reset the GFCI or Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter. These devices work as sort of mini breakers. They trip whenever one of the outlets becomes wet or when there are too many things plugged into an area of wiring. To fix this though, instead of having to reset your entire residential electrical system, try unplugging everything that's in nearby outlets and press the reset button on the outlet itself. The next electrician hack we have is moving ceiling lights without having to run more wire. Sometimes ceiling lights aren't placed in the exact spot that you would like them to be. Although it may seem like a lot of work to fix that, in reality it's not too bad and you can even move a ceiling light a decent amount without having to add more wire or run a new circuit. The way it works is that the electrical runs in your attic usually have room for some movement. You can expand this by removing a few of the staples that connect the electrical cable to the framing. After, make sure to re-secure the cable with staples once again after you have moved the fixture. Next, if you're looking to add new fixtures, an easy hack is that you can just open up closed boxes. When looking for them, they are simply just electrical boxes that have been covered up and painted over. They are usually pretty easy to miss, as they have become a good part of what makes up our environment. While we barely notice them, they do usually have live power in them, which is the reason for the cover, which is required for any boxes that contain wiring. The first step in adding new fixtures is to remove the cover and test the wiring with a non-contact voltage tester for voltage. The way the voltage testers work is that they detect voltage through wire insulation so that you don't risk touching any bare wire ends. Another electrician hack is to use old work electrical boxes as needed. Also known as remodel or cut-in boxes, old Old work boxes are meant to be installed after the ceiling drywall or wall is set in place. They have bending tabs, which are also called flip-up ears, that sit right next to the backside of the drywall that secure the box. All you need to do is simply cut a hole that's similar fit for the box, put the electrical cable into the box, insert the box into the hole, and lastly, tighten the screws to pull the bending tabs or flip-up ears tight to the drywall. Overall, this process saves you the trouble of having to cut out a large hole in your wall or ceiling just to install a standard box against the framing. Of all the things we've discussed, replacing a broken light bulb is one of the most basic and common tasks most people do at one point in their lifetime. Broken light bulbs are no fun, especially if they break in the socket, as it can be a difficult task to fix. However, no need to fret, as most of what is needed to fix is the replacement light bulb itself. To start off, clean out as much as you can of the broken particles and pieces using a metal tool. Then, take and insert the new light bulb into the socket while twisting in reverse. Doing this should catch the old piece and unscrew it finally releasing it from the socket. Not only that, but it will also clean out all of the damaged parts and leave the socket working and ready for the new light bulb. Another way to remove a broken light bulb is using a potato. By using it, it helps prevent you from getting shocked. To do it, first cut the potato in half, then use it to break all of the glass that is left on the bulb. Lastly, press the potato against it and rotate it to unscrew it from the socket. One of the most important steps in using this method is to make sure to turn the power off before doing it. Another electrician hack for everyday people is multiple switch wiring. When you have to deal with multiple switches, almost any form of streamlining that you can manage will ultimately help reduce the clutter of extra wires hitting the cluster of connections. Something important to remember that will make things easier is that in this circumstance, wires don't have to be cut in order to make contact, especially for connections shared between switches. Instead of carefully pigtailing the hot wire to each switch, you should instead simply cut your hot wire extra long. Next, along with the continuous grounding wire, you should also strip a three-quarter quarter inch section of the sheathing in the spot where you want to connect each switch. After that, hook the exposed area onto the screw terminal and connect the next switch like you just did. Finally, at the last switch, make sure to loop the tie wire clockwise around the screw as usual and you're done. Following that hack, you can also remodel electrical boxes as needed. Another name for remodeling boxes is cut-in boxes, which are made to be installed after the drywall in the ceiling or wall has been installed. To keep the package safe, they have flip-up ears or bending tabs that 
snug up to the back side of the drywall. To mount a standard box against the framing, electricians cut a hole that is a close match for the box, slide the box into the hole, and tighten the screws to pull the ears or tabs to the drywall or ceiling. The last electrician hack for everyday people is to carry a strong magnet. It's likely that your entire house wiring base requires you to work behind the walls and ceilings. You're always running new wires, tracing old wires, working from the small holes in the drywall, and trying to perfectly line up everything from both sides. While there are tons of tricks and hacks for drawing lines and punching small holes to mark your way, there's really only one main useful trick that doesn't require permanent changes at all. Magnets. They can detect ferrous metal components and are also easily detected through lightweight building materials such as drywall, wood, tile, etc. One of the bonuses of using magnets is that you can look for studs. Stud finders are known for being hard on batteries, which means that they're also always running out at inconvenient times and needing to be recharged. So instead of letting this slow down your project, carry a strong magnet in your kit to help. Tie a lightweight piece of string onto your magnet and hang it along the wall you're inspecting. Then when the magnet responds, it means there is something ferrous behind the wall. This method also works in circumstances where the surface, material, or coating of the wall is challenging even for a fully charged stud finder. Another way you could use a magnet is as a fishing guide. The next time that you're fishing down the backside of a wall, there's no need to worry about it going off course. Even if you're already using the heavy nut trick in order to keep the string pulled down directly, you can double the effectiveness by using a magnet in your box opening to guide the line down. The last way that a magnet is useful in these types of situations is to use it as a retrieval method. Since you're constantly working in the in-between spaces, it's quite easy to lose or drop small objects into inaccessible spaces. Once again, the magnet can help, that is, as long as the lost items are ferrous. Depending on the space that you're working with, you can attach the magnet to some sort of slim item such as a stick to pull your lost item back to safety. And with all that said, if you're already an electrician running your own business or just about to start and grow your own electrical business, you must learn the four critical things electrical business owners wish they had learned before starting an electrical business so you don't make the same mistakes. Electrician Accelerator has put together a free training video that you can watch right now that will show you exactly how to start, grow, and build your electrical business the right way so you can consistently guarantee profitable work, free up your time, all whilst reducing stress levels and allowing you to have a sustainable and more profitable business that works for you. In this free training video, you'll also learn how to generate a steady stream of jobs on demand and with predictability month after month in your local area without relying on word of mouth and referrals. How to stop competing on price with other electricians and escape your competition. How to convert at least 90% of your quotes and estimates into sales. And how to command premium prices and attract high quality customers that will be happy to pay more. Click on the link in the description below the video. And with that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.